Hey, welcome to my Warframes Where They Are Now series, a little series I've had brewing in the back of my mind since the early days of Warframe, quote unquote. I'm going to put this little intro at the beginning of every video in this series. If you've heard this once or more, feel free to skip it. This is just my opinion and is not guaranteed to be fact. Remember with Warframe, everyone plays at least a little different from each other. That's why there's 52 frames as of making this intro, of course. That being said, I do plan on being as objective as I can with this series. But bias will always be a potential problem and will definitely shine through in certain episodes, if not all. Now, that being said, I hope you enjoy the series. June 20th, 2023. This time we're going to talk about Vavin, the Grenadier frame. He was originally made to be the Engineer frame, but hilariously enough, there's now a frame that fits that role infinitely better. So, this is what he is now. Granted, it's not a bad thing. He's actually better for it, to be completely honest. Though I do find the other frame stronger. Not really a fair comparison, considering the other frame is Protea. <laughs> Base stats on a level 30 Valvin Prime are 200 armor, 225 energy, 300 health, and 300 shields. His passive is he deals 25% extra damage to incapacitated enemies. That's very potent with the rest of his kit, considering how much of it is uh, CC. Valvin's first ability is he sends out a bunch of uh, roller drones that'll seek out enemies and electrocute them. The nice thing is, is uh, it lasts for quite a while, I've noticed, and uh, you just set it and forget it. It costs you almost nothing to do it. Yeah, it's 25 energy, but oftentimes you recuperate that energy not long after casting the ability. So it actually uh, comes in handy. Not to mention, because it does electric damage, it does stun the enemy while it's doing it. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well. Bavin's second ability is Mine Layer. Ah, we finally reached a frame that has a uh, multifunctional ability. I knew that was coming. The first stage of it is Tether Coil, as the name suggests. You throw it out and it just grabs a bunch of enemies and effectively just ropes them to one spot. Kinda nice, I don't typically use it that often, cause I mean, there's one particular orb that overshadows the other three, so we'll get to that when we get to that. Next up is Vector Pad. Yeah, it's an ability. It, it sure is. You drop a, uh, you drop a uh, boost pad on the floor and all it does is make you walk faster in a direction for, I'd say about two seconds? It's definitely a meme more than anything else. As for the uh, third ability that's tied into this, Overdriver. You throw it on an, on an ally and it increases their damage. Comes in handy, but I feel like there are better ways to boost damage. But it's not bad. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely better to have it than to not have it. And then the one that overshadows the other three is Flechette Orb. You throw this bullet sprinkler out, and it just kind of goes to town on any, on any enemy that's nearby. It does fire in random directions, but it's well enough that it actually tends to kill shit, even on Steel Path. Third ability is Photon Strike. You throw out a uh, beacon, and a giant fuck you laser kills whatever's standing there. It's not as powerful as I would like it to be given, you know, what it looks like, but it's still pretty damn strong. It's, it kills most things. It doesn't really need to be any more powerful, it's just, it, it, visually, it looks more powerful than it actually is. It's, it's kind of deceptive in that regard. Editing scenario here. You're not going to believe this, but I forgot to record the audio for Bastille, so I'm doing that real quick now. Sorry if the audio quality sounds chunkier. Anyway, Bastille ends up trapping all the enemies and making them useless until you either activate it again or wait long enough, and it becomes a vortex and forces them to spin for eternity. The best part about this is the fact that uh, when they're spinning eternally, you can actually just straight up get finishers on them repeatedly. So if you have any of the arcanes that actually benefit off of that, you might as well go ahead and use that. As for my build, I run a bit of a mixed bag of a build, though I run a bit of strength more than anything else. As for Archon Shards, uh, when I reinstall them, I had them on them and I uninstalled them for a different frame that I like. Don't worry about it. I'm going to reinstall them for duration and a couple in armor. That's what I had them on before and they were great. 
but yeah, I he's a pain in the ass to decide a build for because of how different some of his abilities are, but at least for me, I typically prefer to just have the range and the strength. I don't necessarily need the duration as much. Though, as you can see over on the right there, I do have the Bastille tab, which is what I use for, you know, Steel Path, you know, defense and whatnot. And that's a fuck ton of duration and range and no strength whatsoever. Because, you know, it effectively allows you to idle a lot of missions. To a degree that I would debate is possibly cheating. <laughs> Obviously it's in the game, so... And maybe not, but it feels stupid. As for how he performs in Daviri, as per usual, he's pretty, pretty damn strong in regular Daviri. Uh, he actually comes in handy when it comes to uh, most mission types in the Undercroft. Same with Steel Path. I will say uh, sometimes it could be a pain in the ass to use him for Steel Path because after a certain point he becomes a little too squishy, but he's pretty good for a good chunk of it anyway. Overall, Vauban is a frame that got a pretty decent rework, and because of it has become one of the stronger frames in the game, and I've heard some people trying to say he's the strongest frame in the game. And honestly, I can't really argue against them, I personally don't think he's the strongest frame in the game, but I can understand why people think that. He does trivialize a good section of the game. Granted, to be fair, the same could be said for Limbo, Rodia if you run a right. Yeah, there's a few other frames. I'm blanking, to be honest. But either way, either way, he's still very strong, and I don't imagine that will change. Uh, and with that, thank you all for watching. Have a great day.